Hey guys, welcome back to part two of this series where we take a look at the Antichrist. Where will he come from? Who is it? And when will it happen? Now let's take a look at the evidence. Let's start with the land of Shinar. All the way back, just after the flood. Do you remember who ruled the world the first time? Who built an empire? Nimrod. Who is Nimrod? He was Noah's grandson. So he built a lot of cities in the land of Shinar. One of them, Babel. It's also where they built the Tower of Babel. The symbol for the Antichrist, rebellion against God. Genesis 10 verse 8, Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on the earth to be a mighty man. Verse 10, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalne in the land of Shinar. And then in the very next chapter, they build the Tower of Babel. Nebuchadnezzar built Babylon, but in Hebrew, Babylon is called Babel. So this was an idea, a, a concept of rebellion against God that never stopped. This idea, this concept started there and it went through the ages even until where we are now. It symbolizes rebellion against Christ, men wanting to be gods themselves. And the spirit of the Antichrist was brought forth by Satan. And it started back in the garden with Adam and Eve. The Babylonian Empire was destroyed by the Persians in Babylon territory. Then the Persians were destroyed by Alexander the Great from the Greeks and in Babylon territory again. There was something about Babylon. The world was governed by Babylon. And when there was a fight between the new governing power, it was in Babylon. That was the seat of power where everything in the world was governed, trade and everything else. But then for the very first time, it moved. The Greeks lost because of who? The Romans. And for the very first time, the Romans moved the seat of power to Europe. But this was not the end of the spirit of Babel, of Babylon. It moved to Europe, so it's still there. So this idea, this concept, you need to understand. The Bible in Revelation also talks about the fall of Babylon. Revelation 18 verse 2, the angel called out, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit. Now, let me just back up a little bit and explain this. There's a prophecy about the nations that will rule after Babylon. Daniel 7, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Verse 3, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. Now, these four beasts, they represent the kingdoms that would rule after Babylon. Verse 4, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man and the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. This fourth beast was the Roman Empire. And it, it was different. It was very powerful. And it also, for the first time in history, moved the power seat from Babylon to Europe. And now from this beast will come the Antichrist. Read it with me. 
Verse 8, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. This is the Antichrist. First, there were ten horns, right? Three of them were plucked out by its roots. There's only seven left. And from them came the little horn, the man, the Antichrist. So let's take a look at the ten horns first. What are they? They are the Germanic tribes who defeated Rome. They were ten. Three of them don't exist anymore. Only seven survived. The Anglo-Saxons, the Alamai, the Burgundians, the Visigoths, the Franks, the Lombarder, and the Suevi. But the Heruli, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths were the three horns that were wiped out. So the spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist, of rebellion against God, moved from Babylon to Europe, and it is still there today. Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the type of guy who looks for a demon behind every bush, you know, who tries to find meaning, you know, that's secret and hidden in every kind of symbol there is. But let's just take a few minutes to look at some. Let's start with the uh, flag of Europe. According to some, the stars on the flag are the crown of the Queen of Heaven that was worshipped back in the time of the Babylonians. So here again, Europe connected with Babylon, carrying the spirit of the Antichrist. Now read Revelation 17 verse 3. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Is this starting to make sense now? This is the same Antichrist spirit of Babylon that you see in Europe. The same false goddess that they worship back in Babylon, which of course flowed into the worship of other idols, other supposed gods, demons. This was also the case with Abram before he was Abraham. You know, most of you know Abraham by now. Christians, Muslims, and also Jews. We, for us, Abraham is very important. But before he was Abraham, he was Abram. And his family worshipped other gods. Joshua 24 verse 2. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. So this is also where some people say, you know, Christianity stole their religion from other religions. But they totally forget about the time before the flood and where it actually comes from, from the beginning of mankind. But you need to understand that Abraham was from the land of Ur, of the Chaldeans. And they worshipped other gods, but also the moon goddess. They had a few Mesopotamian gods. Please go and watch my series on this time before and also right after the flood on DLM men's lifestyle to understand the context better. Now let me just touch a little bit on this so you have better understanding. Jeremiah 7 verse 18 says, The children gather wood, the fathers kindle fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the Queen of Heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. Now this moon goddess was Nimrod's mother. Yes, they believed she became a god. And they worshipped her and other false gods as well. Do you understand now why after the flood people became so evil again? The spread of the Antichrist, rebellion against God, 
And this is why they built the Tower of Babel. Do you understand the connection now between Babel and Europe? Today, there are people in secret groups who still carry this evil spirit of the Antichrist and want to create a one world government system like Nimrod did before God stopped him. The same thing repeats itself over history because it is the same spirit of the Antichrist. You might have heard from many news sources like the Financial Times, Reuters and Politico that the EU Parliament building was made as a replica of the Tower of Babel. And it symbolizes the pride of man in rebellion against God. Why would the leaders of Europe do that? Think about it for a minute. Even here in South Africa, <laughs> they connected the dots. News 24, for example, connected that building they created, the EU, with the Tower of Babel that Nimrod erected to kind of get the people together against God. And they even mentioned the New World Order. Let me quote it. Is it then not interesting that the European Union revived Roman Empire Parliament building at Brussels, Belgium, was designed in the form of an unfinished Tower of Babel. Also, a stylized Tower of Babel has been used to advertise the European Union's goal of human unification under the slogan, many tongues, one voice. The EU Parliament was completed in December 1999. And then just outside the building at Brussels, Guess what statue they erected? The women riding the beast of Revelation 17. Verse 5 says, And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. Are you starting to understand this? It is a spirit of Antichrist against Christ. Why do Hollywood? The news, the media, everybody, when they say, oh my God, or Jesus Christ, no, not talking to him, they just say it because they use his name in vain. Why do they say that instead of other names like Muhammad or Krishna or these kind of things? Because they are against Christ. And we already know that they started to attack Christians on all fronts with political laws, trying to take away free speech educating our children of lies in school and trying to silence us when we want to talk about God. And then I'm not even talking about the 360 million Christians around the world that's being persecuted. And if you've been sleeping, yes, you heard me right. According to Open Doors, more than 360 million Christians suffer extreme or very high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith. A rise of 20 million since two years ago. In the top 50 countries alone, 312 million Christians now face very high or extreme levels of persecution. They are getting ready for the Antichrist to come on the scene. When you look at Europe and even America, even some places in South Africa, all over the world, you start to see symbols of the Antichrist. I'm talking about anti-God symbols. And they came all the way from Babylon, Babel. And as you remember, was Babel was like a ziggurat, right? The Tower of Babel. And what do we find on the one dollar bill? A pyramid. The Illuminati pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Satan on the top, illuminating the rest of the pyramid with his knowledge of evil. And you know those words there on the bottom? What do they stand for? What do they mean? Novos Ordo Seclorum, a new world order of the ages. It is the same Tower of Babel, the spirit of the ages. A lot of men over the ages came and gone. Men who thought that they are gods. Men like Hitler. And some people say that Hitler was the Antichrist. He was a Antichrist, but not the Antichrist. He did not sit in the temple and the Jews would not have accepted him as the Messiah because he wanted to kill them. So no, he's, he's, he was not the Antichrist. But what Hitler did was satanic. 
he was part of the Antichrist spirit. And he even used a man called Albert Speer to build a big place for soldiers to gather in Germany. And he built it after the altar of Zeus, also known as the throne of Satan. Now, does the Bible speak about the throne of Satan? Yes. Revelation 2 verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Did you get that? It was in Pergamum, the throne of Zeus, aka also known as the throne of Satan. Zeus. I'll explain this a little bit later, but some of the other gods, are they just um, an allegory for Satan. So they moved it to Germany and called the museum Pergamum. The real Pergamum was in the country what, what we call today Turkey. And the Ishtar Gate of Babylon was also moved to Berlin. Do you see? The new Babel is in Europe. Babylon is in Europe. And they are getting everyone ready in Europe for the Messiah, Messiah, for the Antichrist. They even portrayed Macron, the leader of France, as walking on water like Jesus. And he used the grandest of backdrops for his entrance on the world stage, a stage erected in front of the famous museum's illuminated glass pyramids, pyramid, ziggurat, Babel. So the evil spirit of Babel moved over to Europe. It stayed there over the generations. It took on different forms with different groups of people, like even the Knight Templars. And there's a reason why the Freemasons call Nimrod the first Grand Master. I mean, after the flood. Remember, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 says this about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So the Antichrist will pretend to be good, to be God. The Knight Templars did the same thing. They pretended to be good, but they were caught. They had the spirit of the Antichrist. Let me just tell you a little bit about this. Remember, Jesus prophesied that the temple will be destroyed, and it was by the Romans. Matthew 24, verse 1, Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these, do you not? Truly, I say, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Now, the night Templars come in because people still regarded the holy land of God as God's land and the M Temple Mount. And the Knight Templars lived under the Temple Mount. That's why they were called the Knight Templars. They basically said they would protect people that would come to the holy land and um, return from it. And that's what they did. And they became insanely rich. Everyone trusted them. They thought they were good people until they were found out to have the spread of the Antichrist. The King of France killed them. They found out that the Knights Templar with the initiation uh, ceremonies or rituals, that they would have same sex and pee on the cross and worship an image of Satan. This image was a man with the head of a goat. And the Illuminati still do that today. So even though they were stopped, the spirit of the Antichrist, of Satan, the dragon of old, already started to spread into other groups. And they continued until today, where they mostly control the world. In the next part, in the final part, part three of this series, I'm going to give you a roadmap so you understand how these secret groups spread and also how close we are to the end times. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so you won't miss that video. And always remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye.